Okay, so welcome back. Now today we're going to take the next step past some recent videos we did where we showed you how to develop a simple application with C Sharp Windows Forms .NET Framework. And we showed you how to grab video, streaming video from a camera. And what I had was a smartphone streaming video over my Wi-Fi, which we showed you in a previous video how to set that all up. And our application was receiving that streaming video and displaying it in this picture box. And we used a simple method to grab that video. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take it to the next step where we're going to modify that application to allow us in the future to develop this application you see here, which takes that streaming video and processes it and displays the processed image in the right hand picture box. And the goal of this is to process the image so that our application can recognize moving objects like cars walk, driving by or somebody walking past. And it will recognize, hey, we've got a moving object and I'm going to draw a rectangle around that object. And I can do whatever else I want with it, but I'm basically detecting that there's a moving object and I can sound an alarm or I can save the file or whatever. You can see here we've got a car driving by and our application successfully recognized it and drew a square box around it. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to prepare to be able to make this more complex application. And we're going to use some techniques like um, detecting events. Like when we capture a frame of video, we're going to have an event and we're going to be able to do, use that event to do the processing. And we're going to have asynchronous methods that we talked about previously. And you can see we've got somebody running by and it's automatically detecting there's a moving object and it's putting a rectangle around it. So this is the application we're going to develop in this video. And you can see that it is fairly simple and it's just capturing video. Uh, in my case, it's a um, smartphone over Wi-Fi. And it's just going to have a start button where you start capturing and then stop, which basically pauses it. And we're also measuring how many frames per second are being captured by this video. And then we have an exit button. And again, it's very similar to a previous video we did using a library called EMGUCV. And I encourage you to take a look at that. So let's take a look at this application and see the modifications we've made to update it. So I'm going to hit stop and you can see the spinner stop spinning and I hit exit. And here is our application. And uh, we showed you previously how to download and install emgu.cv. And I'm in my NuGet package manager and we've installed emgu.cv, cv.bitmap and runtime.windows. We showed you how to do that. You also have to set it up for 64 bit, not any CPU. We showed you how to do that. So the first thing we've got is we've got a picture box here. We just drag and drop. We've got a start button, stop button, a label that's going to display the frames per second and an exit button. And of course, to get the event handlers for the buttons, you just double click and you'll see the event handlers. And here is our application. And we've got some events here, one for the start button, uh, one for the stop button. And we've also added a timer. And the only purpose of the timer is to do the frames per second calculation. And then we've got an exit button. So um, we're only adding one using statement using emgu.cv. And we have some parameters up here we want to define for our application. And we're going to set a Boolean called stream video. We're going to initialize it to false. And that's just for the stop button. We can stop, we can pause it, and the start button will set the stream video to true. Also, we are defining our camera index. When we grab our cameras we showed before, we feed it an index value. If we've got multiple cameras, uh, we can select the different cameras. We're just going to use index zero, which is our default camera. And we've got four parameters that we're going to use for our frames per second calculation. We're going to call frames per second old 30.0 and our present frames per second, we're going to define that as a double. And we're going to use a date time and a time span to calculate the difference in time when we grab each frame. 
So the previous frame was gra grabbed at date time last, and the latest frame was grabbed at date time now, and the time span is going to be the difference. So as we did before, we're going to define a new EMGU CV video capture class, and we're feeding it the index zero. Our form one is just initialized component, and it's all going to be started by the button start event. And it's going to say, okay, stream video equals true. We defaulted it to zero to false. So we're going to say it's equal to true. And we're going to use this event this from the um, video capture class. Our capture object, we can access the image grabbed event. So every time we grab an image, it will generate a, an event. And we can use that image grabbed event to do stuff. And in our case, we're going to use that image grabbed event to capture the frame and display it and do the frames per second calculation. So button start is going to be stream video equals true. We're going to define this image grabbed event. We're call, going to call the event handler capture underscore image grabbed. And then we're going to use the capture dot start to start the capturing. And we're going to enable our timer that we're going to use for the frames per second calculation. And that timer, you can see down here, I'll select it, and it's a 100 milliseconds interval. So we've started the capture. For every grabbed image, it's going to go to this grabbed Im image event handler called capture underscore image grabbed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a system drawing dot size, and I'm going to call it frame size. And we're going to use this to resize the image because coming from our particular camera, it defaults to 640 by 480. So I'm going to resize it to 1920 by 1080. We did that previously. And I'm also going to, as we grab the image, we're going to define a date time now. And then we're going to process the image. If stream video is true, we're going to grab the image and process it and calculate how long it took between frame grabs to get a frames per second. So if stream video is true, we're going to define a mat we talked about before called frame. And we're going to do capture.retrieve and we're going to feed it that frame and it's going to retrieve the frame. Now there's other ways we're going to talk about in a bit, other ways you can grab a frame. But we're going to use the retrieve right now to retrieve the frame. And we are then going to take that frame and resize it. And we're going to use this, we're going to CV invoke, which basically invokes a open CV method called resize. And we're going to take the incoming frame, use the frame size that we defined before 1920 by 1080, and overwrite that frame to this new frame size. And then all we have to do is take that resized frame and use the two bitmap method and use that as the image in the picture box. And that will display that frame as a bitmap. We've defined a time span called TS. And we can calculate the time span, which is time span now, which when we grab the frame, minus the date time for the last grabbed frame. And that will calculate the difference between the time between each grabbed frame, and we'll be able to display it. Then we're going to dispose that frame because we're all done with it. We've already displayed it. So we will use the dot dispose to dispose that frame so we don't use a whole lot of memory. And we're going to set the last grabbed frame as this present frame and move on to the next one. So this is just going to go through for each grabbed frame, grab the frame, resize it, and display it. And then over and over again. And then we're going to also calculate frames per second. Now, button stop is simple. It's going to stream video equals false. It's going to unsubscribe from the image grab method. It's going to stop the capture and disable the timer. So very simple. Now the timer one tick is going to take that time span. And as long as it's greater than zero, the total milliseconds is greater than zero, we're going to calculate the frames per second. And that's one over the total milliseconds of that time span. And since that's in milliseconds, we're going to multiply times 0 0.001. And that's going to give us how many frames in one second. We also, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to apply a low pass filter. 
And that's to make the display not jump all around every time we grab a frame. And we've talked about this in previous videos. It's a great way in data acquisition to, to filter out new variables, to not give them a whole lot of weight. And our frames per second is going to be 90% of the old frames per second and only 10% of the new frames per second and add those together to get the, the latest frames per second. So it's going to take time, like 10 frames, to get up to a new value so we don't bounce around a lot. And then we're going to say label1.text is frames per second to string. We're going to use an F0 to have no uh, decimal points, frames per second. And that's about it. The exit button is just going to do an application exit. So that's the basic methodology we're going to use. We've added this image grabbed event that we can use to process the image. And we've got this timer that we've added to process some additional data. And we're going to be using these in our new application that's going to be using image detection to make it a little bit more useful. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the ways that OpenCV captures images. And we're going to use the capture.retrieve, but there are other methods that you can use. And I want to go through those briefly to explain the difference between them. So now in our code, um, we have this event that is generated when an image is grabbed by the video capture class. And when a image is grabbed, what we do is we define a new mat or matrix called frame and we do a capture dot retrieve and we tell it to retrieve it into that frame. Now this video capture device called capture has like four different methods associated with capturing and grabbing images from your video stream. So I want to go through and talk about what those are. It can be kind of confusing, but hopefully this will help. So the four methods are grab, which grabs a frame, retrieve, read, and query frame. And they're all associated with getting images from your, the video that you can display. And they have, they have different return values. Grab returns a Boolean, retrieve returns a Boolean, and all these Booleans are whether it was successful or not. And then read returns a Boolean, but query frame returns a mat or matrix. To understand this better, let's look at the capture method that we are running. So in the start button, we do a capture.start, which starts the grab process. So let's take a look at this because this helps us understand the different grabbing methods. So capture.start, according to the documentation, it starts the grab process in a separate thread, which is nice. Once started, use the image grabbed event handler, which we're doing, and retrieve method to obtain the images. All right, so if you do a capture.start, you start it in a separate thread, and then you can rely on the image grabbed event handler to process the image, and you use the retrieve method to obtain the image. Now, here's our retrieve method, returns a Boolean, and we feed it the frame that we want it grabbed into, and the documentation says this retrieve method decodes and returns the grabbed video frame. So it assumes the frame has already been grabbed, which is why we got the grabbed event, and it decodes and returns the grabbed video frame is the whatever output image. We called it the frame. But there's also a method called grab, and it grabs a frame. You don't feed it anything, and it just returns a Boolean, so I think that is kind of a manual grab. It's not relying on a, a video capture event. It goes out and manually grabs a frame. So it's different from using the event handler. Now the read method, you also feed it the image that you want it read into. And what that does is it first calls a grab function, which grabs a frame followed by a retrieve, and the retrieve decodes the frame that you grab and returns it. So I think the read and the grab are more like manual methods where the retrieve does it automatically based on the event handler. Now there's also the query frame, and that you don't feed it an output image, it just returns a frame or a matrix 
And the description is that it captures a BGR or blue, green, red image frame. It's unclear to me how that actually works. I've tried it with the uh, event handler and the retrieve. And if you use it instead of retrieve, it also works. So uh, it's up to you how you want to try it out. But I found that when you do the event handler, you do, as it says in this documentation, you use the image grabbed event handler and re the retrieve method to um, obtain the images. That's how I'm going to use this, unless we're going to do something manually. So anyway, that's our application now. And in future videos, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding functionality to allow us to understand how uh, motion capture works. And we're also going to see how we can expand that to identify objects and put a frame around them. So if you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.